Hey guys, Brendan Mern here. Um, today I want to talk to you about breaking free from self-protection. And first of all, what is self-protection? We have all had times throughout our lives where our heart has been hurt, we've been hurt, we've experienced pain and trauma. And self-protection, simply put, is us trying to manage and manipulate the world so that we don't have to go through that same pain again. It's a, it's a very survival instinct. It's inside most of us as human beings to just try and prevent ourselves from being hurt in those same ways. And so uh, self-protection, and on paper, it can sound like it's actually good and it's serving us, but I want to talk to you about what it actually is doing to us and how we can actually release that and our lives can become so much better by uh, releasing that whole self-protection. So ultimately, what self-protection is, is it's saying, I'm going to control my world to make sure I'm not hurt again. And to do that, we actually have to enter into the realm of control and manipulation, controlling in our environment. And uh, a simple, simple example of this, um, with me and my wife, Often, uh, I'm, I had this fear of being hurt and rejected like most people do. And so there are times when, uh, when you're married, uh, it just, you're not always in the same mood, right? And so sometimes if I'm in a mood to connect and cuddle and my wife isn't, uh, sometimes that would feel like rejection for me. So one of the ways I started to self-protect in this situation is I would try and watch the moods that my wife was in and see if she was in a mood where she would want to connect. And if so, then I would engage. And if not, I would actually stop and not be who I was. I would uh, stifle my heart's desire to connect. And I wouldn't even show that. I wouldn't even voice that. I wouldn't give that a place. And so that was me trying to manage, control, uh, see the situation so that, oh, how can I make sure I don't feel those feelings of rejection again? You know, and we can do this with all kinds of things. If we feel like we, we had a business venture and we failed and we feel the failure, we feel the defeat, we can go, oh, how can I control and manage my world to make sure I never do that again? You know, and maybe that looks like, oh, I'm not going to take risks again, or I'm going to play it safe or, you know, different things that we do. And, uh, and it's always out of a, it's always out of a heart of how can we prevent ourselves from going through this pain, but it's never really beneficial. So what are the actual results? What do we get from, from self-protection? What we think we're getting is that, oh, I'm not going to have to go through pain again. And that's not actually what happens when we self-protect. What we actually get is we are controlling and restricting our world or someone else's world um, to the point to where we become voiceless, where we aren't able to express our true heart's feelings, emotions, we first censor it through, is this going to be safe? Do I need to change or manipulate something? We're not being our true selves. We're actually being reactionary and out of fear, operating out of fear, living in reaction to the world rather than showing up to the world just as we are. And so one of the things that happens when we start living in self-protection is the very heart that we're trying to protect, the very thing that we're trying to do, which is prevent ourselves from going through pain, uh, we actually constrict and stifle and 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 choke out our our true heart's feelings and our heart slowly withers and dies because instead of living present living full we are um managing everything which becomes exhausting we're living out of our heads we're living out of management we're living out of fear of reaction we're trying to make sure we are in control of everything around us and that, simply put, is just not the way we're meant to live. And the reason why I'm sharing with you this now is because I'm realizing how much of my life I'm, I have used management and control out of this whole fear of self-protection, and the fruit of it is so negative. We think we're, we think we're protecting ourselves. We think we're doing ourselves a service, and it's actually the opposite. And I'm learning how much in my own life I have taken away my own voice. I haven't given my heart a place to be fully present. I've used management, control, and equations to try and live out life rather than just me being me. And, uh, and so even for that first example that I gave of if, if my wife wasn't in a mood to cuddle and I didn't say anything and I didn't go, she wasn't in the mood to, to connect or whatever, she needs some alone time. And instead of me just going and being me, if I just I stifle what, uh, what was truly in my heart, then I'm not getting to express what's in my heart. You know, it's, it's like your heart dies a little when it's not able to live free, when it's not able to live whole. And so even if I were to go and hug my wife and kiss her and she was like, oh, hey, 
I, I love you, but I need some alone time right now. That would be, end up feeling better for my heart. I got to express what I wanted. I got to express that I wanted to be close to her. And hey, she is a free person. There are times when we're both in different stages or different periods of our life where you know maybe one one of us needs more alone time than the other, or, or vice versa, depending on the day. You know, um, but she gets to choose what's what's right for her. And in my case, I get to know that I express that, and I don't have to live in fear of reaction, stifling something that's inside me that needs to be expressed. And she also gets to feel that from me where before if I hold that back, maybe she was in a mood to, to connect with me and maybe I'm actually stealing a point of connection from my wife. Maybe I'm actually stealing opportunity for both of us to, to connect because I'm trying to control and manage the situation and giving into fear. And so there's just so much that it can steal from us. So let me leave you with this. What do we do when we find out that we are self-protecting? How do we get rid of this? How do we deal with this? And again, this is something that I'm learning and I'm trying to do more and more in my own life. And that is we have to surrender. We have to surrender our heart, surrender the fact that we cannot prevent ourselves from experiencing pain and disappointment. But the truth is when we we're kids, when we we're young, pain and disappointment felt so overwhelming and it felt so big and strong to where sometimes we forget that God has created us to where we can actually feel pain. We're strong enough to move through it. And it's better to allow ourselves to surrender control of our environment. It's better to allow ourselves to live free, fully present, even if sometimes there is something like rejection or let down. And the truth is when that pain comes, God has given us everything we need to be able to move through it and not get stuck, not get beaten down, not get hung up on it. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you guys have noticed, we, we all tend to have different ways that we self-protect. But if there's anything that came up with you when I was talking about this, just spend some time with yourself and ask God, God, how can I surrender this to you? I want to lay down the self-protection of my heart, trying to manage the situations around me. And I want to fully show up and trust that if there is pain, if there is hardship, you will guide me, you will be my comforter, and I don't have to be my own protector. You can be my protector. So that's just something that uh, I've been learning. It has been so life-changing for me, and I just wanted to give, the, give that to you guys. And I will see you guys later.